How's it going guys and welcome back to another video. So we are out and about in the Unimog which is a rare occasion and um, but yeah we are on our way to go collect our log splitter. Now I have already had the trailer out uh, with the Unimog and I went and collected the UTV so that is back at the overflow farm so I just got the trailer dropped off and we are on our way to grab that splitter so I'm very excited um, to get the splitter and um, the ATV or the UTV on the farm I don't know if we're gonna have any time today to play with our new fancy toys but um, yeah it'll be nice to just have them there anyway I did take the UTV on a very quick test drive and it's actually got a bit of speed to it I like it and what was also very noticeable about it actually was the fact that it has an insane turning circle like the turning circle on that thing is ridiculous it is so nice like it almost feels like a a zero turn mower okay back a bit more lovely that should do that thing um, seems quite heavy good thing we brought the the Unimog and not the pickup truck there's no way our pickup truck would um, would pull this I guess that's why the old man said that we should take this thing so yeah anyway yes I'm very excited to take this back to the farm I don't know where we're actually gonna put it so for now I'm just gonna put it somewhere at the overflow farm but we're gonna have to sort of set it up somewhere where it's actually usable and I've kind of been thinking about how we can do this in terms of sale uh, or sales I think maybe we should just go like per load because we've got the pickup truck so if we just price it per load I'll have to work out sort of what a good price will be but basically just a full load on the pickup truck I think will be a good way to go about it rather than sort of trying to package and that sort of a thing and um, just sell it by the load I think that's probably the best idea um, or the best way for us to do it anyway at the moment right um, okay where are we gonna put this I don't know maybe we'll just put it here for now it'll be fine I guess that'll do okay so the UTV is in there yeah that'll do it's out of the way alrighty fantastic so um yeah we have got quite a bit of field work to do today because I didn't get half of what I wanted to do yesterday uh, done so yeah we are kind of playing catch-up at the moment so we're going to take this back and then we'll have to get the John Deere the 78 uh, well, yeah 7810 back out and we're going to have to get probably the rower on it or well, you know what maybe we should do the tethering first get the the small fill drying out a bit more before we start rowing and bailing over there yeah I think we'll do that we'll get the tether out on the uh, 7810 and we'll do that field then we'll hook up to the rower we'll come back to this big field and we'll get that road up and by that time we can head back and row the small field and then we can probably leave that to sit for a little while while we collect on the big field and then eventually we'll do bailing on the small field so it's going to be very much up and down in between the two fields but i think it's going to be kind of the best way to do it anyway all right I'll tell you what, I freaking love this Unimog. It is such a cool vehicle. Like, honestly, I would daily drive this thing. I genuinely would. It is so cool. I love it. Yeah. Maybe someday we can buy something like this. Oh my goodness. It, it's such a cool vehicle. I mean, it doesn't get out much. I mean, I think this is only probably my second or third time driving the thing ever. And the old man doesn't drive it much either. But um, it is very cool though. 
I mean, look at it. It is so cool. Kind of hard to judge how long it is. It's, it's shorter than what you expect. But I'm always worried about it because it does actually have a three point on it. So I'm always worried about sort of backing that into the shed or something. So, yeah. I, I kind of misjudge the length of it. Right. Let's get this um, warmed up a little bit. So, yeah, we are going to get the tether and we'll start doing the tethering on the small field. After which we will get the rower out. Then we'll do rowing on the big field. Then rowing on the small field. And, um, yeah. Then we'll probably come back and do a bit of bailing. But we are going to do most of it uh, in a time lapse. And, um, yeah. Yeah we'll probably just jump straight into that so i think yeah we'll we'll get this all hooked up we'll get the drone out and we'll get a bit of it done we'll probably go come back at some point and sort of see how things are going and do a bit of a sit rep but um yeah for now we are going to jump into that time lapse so sit back relax and enjoy Alright, so things are going along pretty nicely. Can't really complain. So we've got the rowing done and we've got the uh, tethering done on the small field as well. So um, yeah, can't really complain. So next up is going to be collecting. We're going to get the, um, the forage wagon hooked up here and we'll be collecting the grass at the big field at the overflow farm. And we will be putting all of that grass directly into the silage bunker up there so we're going to be using that one i don't know if we'll be covering immediately um or are we gonna try and get a second cut in there as well i'm not 100 percent sure we'll have to see how much we get into the bunker uh, before we do that so uh yeah we'll we'll have oh hang on hello all right so that was old man joe and we have got a little bit of a change of plans so 
the dairy is desperately low on milk. Oop, squeeze through here. Lovely. So we're going to get some milk out to them. And apparently there's also a few pallets sitting outside that needs delivering. So that's heading to the Waffle Hut. Unfortunately, it's heading to the north one. So, yeah, a bit of a drive. But anyway, it'll be fine. But I'm kind of wondering... I have been using this trailer back here and it's a bit like bulky and um, yeah awkward like it works well for the bales and stuff but I wonder if it'll be better for the pallets if we use this one man that needs a wash oh my goodness hmm that might actually be better in fact we could probably even pull that with the pickup truck Ah, oh, maybe not a bad idea. Okay. Although, hmm, I don't know if it's the right type of hitch for the pickup truck. But even if we just use the Massey and use that trailer instead of the, the sort of flatbed, the big one, I think it'll work better, to be honest. We might give that a go. I think we'll still use the Massey. I, I don't know if it's going to work that well with the pickup truck. Uh, these pallets are quite heavy as well, so yeah, I don't think it's gonna like uh, the weight of that trailer um, pushing the back of it. So yeah, maybe we'll um, we'll stick with the tractor, but we'll maybe give that trailer a go. Get this backed up in here. Oh. It was going so well. It was going so well. It was beautiful. Okay. Here we go. That'll do just fine. Okay. So yeah, the silage over here is getting relatively low. Although there's more in here than what sort of what it looks like because the bunker is massive. But yeah, I I don't know how much we'll get into the other bunker at the overflow farm. Like I say, I think we'll we'll probably get it filled up. Um, or, well, everything that we that we just cut this morning. We'll get all of that in there, and then we'll sort of see how much space we've got. If we don't have a lot of space, then we might just um, compact it and cover it up. If we do have a lot of space, then I think we'll actually wait for a second cut. Um, try and sort of push it a little bit. I don't know if that's pushing our luck too far, but we'll try. I, I think we can get a second cut off of uh, that field before we change it into a wheat field. But I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to see. We're going to have to get some manure out on the grass fields again. Uh, in fact, we might need more than one application. So we'll have to make a bit of time for that because I do want to maximize the yield off of those fields okay especially the big field want to try and get as much off of that field as we possibly can while we can before we uh, change that to um, to a wheat field but uh, yeah anyway I am um, I haven't spoken to old man Joe about the manure yet I keep forgetting about that but I think I'll wait until I can sort of see how much um, we're going to have left after doing an application on, on the two grass fields. Like I say, we're probably going to have to do two applications. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see what it's like, how much we've actually got left. In fact, we might not have any left. I'm not 100% sure. Especially after two applications. Mm, I don't know. Right, this thing really needs a wash as well. It seems like everything on the farm needs a wash. The Massey needs a wash. That is starting to um, look a bit rough again. It's not too bad though. It's not as bad as this anyway. Okay, so looks like a usual order. One pallet of cheese crates and um, two pallets of butter. All right, so we have got everything loaded up and we are on our way. 
So yeah, this um, roller coaster thing on the left hand side here, I haven't been able to get any information on it just yet, but I do want to ask Old Man Joe about it, but I'm very curious about it. I wonder if it was a private thing? Was it a private project or was it a community project? I don't know, it's... Yeah, I find it quite curious that it just stopped by the looks of it. Yeah, I, I wonder how long it's been sitting like that, but uh, yeah, quite interesting. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, um, now that I see the dealership as well, I kind of want to have a chat to them about maybe getting some demo equipment on the farm. Because... I mean, at some point, there's probably going to have to be some some upgrades of equipment and that sort of thing on the farm. But I would like to be able to make suggestions, good suggestions, educated uh, suggestions, uh, when that time comes around. Like, for instance, the, the Massey here and the John Deere, they're not going to run forever. I mean, they're good solid tractors and they're relatively well taken care of, so... I mean, they, they had no, by no means sort of at the end of life, but yeah, I think, I think they'll probably have to look into some form of replacements at some point. And um, when that day comes around, I kind of want to be able to give some, some educated uh, suggestions. So it would be nice if there's a possibility that we can get some, some loan equipment out on the farm every once in a while that we can sort of try especially for the dairy i think i think that's sort of the the biggest thing i'm I, i'm not too too worried about the the arable side of things we've got some really really nice equipment that we use out on the fields but the dairy equipment is all sort of yeah older and um yeah not not exactly uh, top of the range i would say so, yeah, I, I would like to try some more modern equipment and maybe we can um, convince Old Man Joe to make some upgrades. But, uh, yeah, we shall see. Anyway, we are going to get this pulled in there for them and we'll get it unloaded. Well, they'll get it unloaded. And, um, yeah, we will come back when we are on our way to the farm. Because they are a bit slow. So, yeah. I'm maybe going to have a bit of a walk around or something. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so that is everything dropped off. And, yeah, I like this trailer. I think it works better for these deliveries. Especially when um, running the Massey. Are they busy? Sure, they're hard at work over there. Now that they've got um, some more milk in. But, uh, yeah, I, I do like this. It just works a little bit better for me uh, compared to the other trailer so I think I'll be using this in the future anyway so yeah anyway we uh, probably need to head back out into the field and start collecting uh, the grass there get it into the silage pit I don't know if we're gonna have enough time to do baling today I was kind of hoping to get that done as well, but I don't know. It depends how long um, the collecting take, and we might have to do some compacting as well. It just depends on how full that um, that bin gets. We might actually need to take the John Deere up there as well if we need to do some some spreading or yeah some work regarding uh, the silage itself if we maybe need to um, sort of heap it up a bit more uh, more than what we can do with the trailer it's already got the the correct fork on there so that's good and uh, but we'll see if we need it we'll we'll bring it back i'm gonna try and sort of get it all stacked up nice and high uh, just using the trailer but yeah we'll have to see if we if we need it we'll take it over there and um yeah if if we do have loads of space left after doing all of the collecting then i'll probably just leave it i won't do the compacting now i don't think although if we do get it stacked too high it's gonna start 
to get really, really difficult to compact. So maybe we'll do the compacting anyway. I'll probably bring the... Hmm, the 6250? Probably bring that out for compacting. It's the biggest, heaviest tractor that we've got with the biggest tires. So it's probably going to be the best one to use uh, in this case. So, yeah, this definitely isn't going to work that well with um, quite narrow tires and it's not exactly a big heavy tractor so yeah and uh, can't really see much all right yeah so um yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes like i say we'll probably just get um get going here and see where we end up and take it sort of one step at a time okay i think i've got everything hooked up everything looks good and uh, there's nothing in here right uh, no okay that's fine right hey you never know sometimes um i would throw like a rake or something in there so i just wanted to make sure that um, there's nothing there but it looks clear so that's fine okay here we go lovely so yeah, that um, split of ours, where it's sitting at the moment, I kind of thought about it. It might not actually be a bad idea to just sort of leave it there. Like, I mean, we, we'll sort of move it a little bit, but it's kind of out the way and there's actually quite a lot of room there. So it might be easy enough to work around that area. Um, one thing that I am a little bit concerned about, which I didn't think of initially, is this is kind of, well... It's a good area with a lot of trees, and it's a it's a nice area to work. The problem is, the only front loader that we have to use is the John Deere, which is a two-wheel drive, and it's very, very, very steep out here. So I don't know if it's actually going to work. We might actually just have to cut things short enough that we can move them by hand, or at least roll them downhill. So, um, yeah, I didn't realize that for a little while. So, yeah, bit of a problem, I guess. But anyway, we'll sort of figure it out. And uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll, we'll find a workaround for it. But yeah, we'll just have to use what we have available to us. But anyway, we are going to get the drone back out. And we are going to jump into a quick time lapse. And we are going to get all of this collecting done. So, um, yeah, for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy! so that is all of the collecting done and uh yeah that wasn't too bad we got a good few loads off of that it really doesn't look like much to be honest but it's it's more than what it looks like and look at that so yeah it really doesn't look like there's a lot in here but i reckon we've probably got around 60 to 70 thousand liters in here so it should 
last us a decent while, to be fair. I did start just briefly uh, to sort of compact it a little bit, just to spread it out to sort of see what we are dealing with. And I don't think that I'm going to cover it now. I don't think I'm going to completely compact this and cover it. I am going to try and get another cut in here before we do that. So, yeah, if, if we can have double that, I think it'll last us a good while. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's less than what I was kind of hoping for. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's still it's still a decent amount. But, yeah, it also kind of begs the question, how freaking big was this farm back in the day that they could fill up the main silo at the... Um, at the farmyard i mean that thing is massive it's probably three times this size and they were filling it up and then sometimes i had more left like an overflow and that's why this is here how big was this farm i mean oh my goodness as far as i'm aware everything here that's sort of logging now was theirs and probably a lot towards the town was theirs as well Probably what is the town now was probably theirs as well um, at some point. So, yeah, I mean, this must have been a massive operation. Oh, there's a tower up there. Nice, I haven't seen that before. Nice, we should head up there at some point and see what that's all about. But, uh, yeah, this had to be a, a gigantic operation that they were running here. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it just leaves us a lot of space to use right now. But, um, yeah. That, that looks a little bit sad, but like I say, it it looks worse than what it is. I reckon it's probably about, yeah, 60, 70,000, somewhere around there. Um, which isn't bad. It'll definitely keep us going for a while. But like I say, if we can double that before we change this into a wheat field, uh, that'll be really good. Um, also, I kind of thought that what I will do, because we're going through uh, the hay bales quite quickly, and we have to keep shredding um, bales at this point, I am going to use the trailer... And I am going to collect the hay that's on the small field over there. And I'm going to get it straight into uh, the shed where we keep that, all of the shredded hay. And I'm just going to fill that up as much as I can. If we can get everything in there, then that's perfectly fine. Um, otherwise, we'll basically just get it filled up and then we'll bale the rest and store that over here. But yeah, I think it's just going to be um, easier rather than baling everything, bring it over here and then having to shred it again. I think it'll just be... Um, a bit more efficient doing it that way around. But yeah, other than that, I basically was looking at this thing. And there's a lifter on the other side there, a log lifter. So we basically have to swing this thing around. So I'll have to get the tractor over here. I was thinking about the side by side. But uh, yeah, that will probably break the suspension if we hook this thing up to that. So we'll get the Massey or something over here and just get it sort of swung around. And um, yeah, we'll maybe test this thing out real soon. And I'll also have to work on pricing for um, for a load. Uh, but yeah, I think um, I think it'll probably work if we kind of put it here just the other way around. It'll sort of be out of the way, but also keep it functional. Anyway, so um, yeah, we'll basically just have to do um, a bit of fertilizing, probably manure um, on this field and the other one. Probably two applications um, relatively close to each other, I would say. But, um, yeah, we'll see how that all turns out. So, we'll have to get, obviously, the collecting done there and bailing whatever's left, if anything is left. Um, after that, we'll just do that um, application here. And then we can probably, um, yeah, head out into the hills there and um, see if we can get a bit of firewood made. I'm quite excited about that. But we are going to leave it there for today, guys. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you all next time.